Welcome to the Catholic History Show. My name is Brendan Lane. I'm a former high school Catholic history and theology teacher. And today I thought I'd talk about the Wexford Rebellion uh, from County Wexford, Ireland in, in 1798. But before I begin, I thought I would say please like the video if you like the video and subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you'll get notifications when I release more videos. I'm doing about one a week now. I'm going to try to keep that up. Maybe even get a couple more out. So as most of you probably know, in 1776, the American Founding Fathers signed the Declaration of Independence. And this had consequences across the entire British Empire. In 1783, of course, the Americans won the war when they signed the Treaty of uh, Paris. Um, and now all the British colonies were saying, hey, if those American farmer bumpkins can, can do this rebellion and be successful, maybe we can too. And that, that was bad enough. But then the French uh, psycho Freemasons decided it was a good idea to start, obviously, lopping off the heads of the aristocracy, you know, 1789 in the French Rebellion, French Revolution. And this sent shockwaves across the European countries. So you can imagine that the British royalty and parliament at the time were very touchy when it came to rebellions. And at the same time, in Ireland, there was this movement led by, you know, there were good Protestants. Wow, I know, shocker. I'm saying good Protestants. They were good Protestants. And they said, we need to break away from the British government. But you know what? We need to give Catholics rights. Because at this time, in Ireland, Catholics had essentially no rights. They, were, they, were, they weren't slaves, but they were, in, in essence, slaves. And anyways, the, 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 these, these Protestants and obviously some of the Catholic... Um, Catholics in Ireland, they started this new political group ca called the United Irishmen, and this was in 1791. So they started doing what political parties normally do. They petitioned the government, but when you petition the government and say, hey, by the way, we want to just, you know, essentially leave the country and we want to have our own country, the government usually doesn't respond well to that. So when they weren't getting the answers that they wanted from the British government, in 1798, they planned this rebellion in May. May of 1798, they're going to have this United Irishman Rebellion. People were going to rise up all over the country, and they were going to take down the British government. They're going to start their own country. Well, um, you know, it might have worked, except that the British government found out about it, and the English government found out about it. And so, um, you know, King George obviously decided we're going to have to spend some resources and uh, lock down Ireland. So they went into martial law. Now, Again, this isn't isn't the most horrible thing in the world at first. Um, you know, it's understandable when you have a group of people that are essentially uh, seditious. You would think that maybe martial law isn't the worst thing until we can figure out who the bad guys are and get those guys arrested and get them tried and all the rest of it. Um, but then the British government decided that they were going to farm out the you know clearing up of this rebellion to essentially the local Protestant men. And they created these groups called the Militia and the Yeomanry. And I'm not going to get into the distinction between the two. But in essence, they were two groups of, um, you know, some of them were wealthier Protestant um, uh, landowners. And uh, they had a lot to lose if, you know, especially the Irish Catholics, were able to gain control. So, obviously, the Catholic bishops in Ireland at the time had a lot to say about uh, the United Irishmen. And many of the Catholic bishops at the time were very hopeful um, towards the English government due to the Quebec Act of 1774, which granted rights to the Roman Catholics in French Canada. Um, the association with the Quebec Act of 1774 and the American Revolution is fascinating, and most people don't realize that within the Declaration of Independence itself, there is a line referencing it, um, which is actually bigoted towards Catholicism. In any event, the bishops in Ireland at the time were very hopeful that George III had just granted the rights to Catholics and the Catholic bishops and the Catholic Church in Canada. They were hoping, you know, let's be good citizens and George III is going to do the same thing over here. Well, that was fine. Um, in fact, in County Wexford, the bishop, Bishop Caulfield, was a very pro, very supportive um, of the George III and the English monarchy and, and parliament. And so he ordered, he, he told all of the Irish that they were not to participate in the United Irishmen uh, Rebellion of May 1798, and that they should um, hand over their weapons because the English crown was asking for the Irish people to hand over their weapons um, in order to, obviously this is part of the martial law. So one of the curates in his diocese, and Bishop Caulfield's diocese, was uh, Father John Murphy. 
Uh, he was a county clerk in Kilcormick. And so he bled his parishioners and they gave over their weapons and they swore an oath to the British crown. And um, everything was, I mean, everything was okay. But then again, the British government, the English government deputized essentially all of these non-military uh, men to go around and put down the rebellion. It was a complete disaster. Um, to say that the this was butchery uh, would be an understatement. They they rounded up um, as many United Irishmen as they could and would execute them without giving them a trial. And then they went on to start um, just killing the people they suspected or they essentially wanted. There's there a great deal of bloodlust within the yeomanry. And in fact, Lord Cornwallis, general of the British forces who lost, who had to surrender at Yorktown, hooray for America, um, he actually uh, wrote a private letter to General Ross um, in the British uh, military army, and he said this, quote, the yeomanry are in the style of the loyalists in America only a thousand times more ferocious. They now take the lead in raping and murder. The militia follow closely in murder and every kind of atrocity. End quotation. So as you can see, uh, these these yeomen, these militias were not good guys. They were not there to keep peace. They were there to essentially cause mass chaos. Maybe if you're in the United States of America right now, you can see something similar. We've been seeing it all last summer. In any event, these deputized uh, little armies were going around the countryside, essentially committing great acts of atrocity until they came to the town of Bulabog. There's a great song out there. Look it up. It's a phenomenal song. It was written almost 100, I think it was actually 100 years after the rebellion called Bulabog. And it's this tiny little town in Wexford County, County Wexford, Ireland. And it was there that Father John Murphy heard that these yeomen were coming to essentially uh, round up a bunch of people and kill them because they were suspected of being United Irishmen. So Father John Murphy, he gets a group of guys and they go and they, they essentially defend the town. The yeomen come into town, they start burning houses indiscriminately, and Father Murphy and his little group of guys, they stand up to them. And they kill them, like almost all of them. They kill the lieutenant that's in charge of them, I think his name was Lieutenant Bookie, and this kicks off uh, what became known as the Wexford Rebellion. The Wexford Rebellion is is kind of a complicated topic, so I'm not going to go into too depth. Like I never do in these videos, I never get really in depth. If you want to learn more, there's an article on uh, CatholicIreland.net. It's very good. It's very informative. I've got a lot of the information for this video from that. Plus, there's a couple other sites that I can link to in the uh, description section. But in any event, Father Murphy leads this group of guys. And then the word spreads like wildfire across the countryside. All of a sudden, there's Irishmen just getting up and standing up, and they're going to they're going to fight back now. They're not going to take this anymore. The militia and the yeomanry that are killing and murdering and raping they're they're done with that. And so this rebellion starts, um, and they, they in essence take over the entire county of Wexford. And if you don't know where Wexford County Wexford is, it's just south of Dublin. So this was an incredibly um, frightening experience for a lot of the English uh, transplants or the Protestant Irish that were living there because they were worried that th this rebellion that was growing in size, and we're talking about tens of thousands of men that were flocking to Father Murphy's side, that if they, they were able to take Dublin, that they would just cause, they would in essence kill ev all the Protestants. And so England obviously was also very worried about this. This was a, this was a major problem. And so England sent troops, men, guns, um, and uh, uh, weapons over into Ireland to put down this rebellion. It takes them about five weeks. But in the process, about 30,000 men die, um, including, uh, sadly, Father uh, John Murphy. Out of the 76 priests, according to CatholicIreland.net, uh, out of the 76 priests in the um, diocese under uh, Bishop Caulfield, I think 11 of them participated in the rebellion, um, and I think most of them, most of them die. Um, so uh, some of the things that would happen during the rebellion, uh, the 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 yeomen, the militia, they would take a city and they would just kill anyone that was associated. Even the guys that surrendered, they just kill them automatically. Um, that's why you have such a high casualty rate in five weeks. 
And so um, eventually the English get back control, but it, it was close. And the reason that the Irish were not able and Father Murphy wasn't able to successfully um, really take uh, make this rebellion into something real was because, one, they didn't have foreign support. They thought the French would come to their aid quickly, but obviously France uh, was in its own kind of disaster at the point at that point. And two, um, they didn't have any real military leadership, right? One of the things that's different about the American Revolution is we had at least George Washington. We actually had military commanders who'd served in military posts prior to the war to lead um, the the tiny little army around. Father Murphy had no experience, obviously, in military matters, and yet he's leading this body of tens of thousands of men. And it wasn't something that he really wanted. It wasn't something that he asked for. It was just he was in a place where he saw his his people, his flock, being murdered, butchered, and he said, "I'm I'm not going I'm not going to stand for that." And and sadly, obviously, it ended in an open rebellion that cost the life of tens of thousands of people. Um, and that's all that's all I have to say about that for right now. Um, I hope you liked the video. Uh, again, if you did, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I will see you hopefully in a week. All right, take care. God bless.